Okay, so Logic Pro 10.6 just dropped last week. And if you're new to Logic or if you've been using Logic for a while, I wanna show you five things to customize within Logic as soon as you open it. So if you're new to it, this is what you probably wanna do. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to customize your transport bar and control section on this top section over here along with your display. You can go ahead and right click in this gray area and go to customize control bar and display. Or you can select it by going, hitting this arrow and go customize control bar and display, up to you. And to adjust what's within this LCD display over here, you can check the uh, different settings, which one you prefer, which one you like, or what information you need. If you're just recording a podcast, maybe you just want the time rather than the beats and time. But you can also go to custom and select exactly what you want in this display that gives you like a bird's eye view of the session. And you can go through each option and select what you want, just extends it and puts all the information you need right there at a glance. Now for these other sections on the top right here, we can go ahead and select what we want in or out of it. Now you can go through each one of these and decide what you need for yourself, but if I can recommend just one thing, the transport section right over here under capture recording, click that and it'll bring in a new recorded option right here. Now capture recording, what it allows you to do is it basically listens to all like whatever you're playing on your MIDI, it's listening to it. So as you're playing through a song and you're just sort of fiddling away, you can actually stop, hit that capture record button and import everything that you just played. Now this is really important because sometimes you're sort of just playing around. If you've ever been in that situation where you just forget what you played and you can't get it back, hit capture record, Logic records everything for you in the background. All right, so next thing I wanna show you is how to customize the look of Logic. If you go to the top left-hand corner, hit Logic Pro, go to Preferences and go to Display. Under Tracks, you can select the background color. So this right over here, you can select it to a bright color or to a dark color, or you can customize it how you like. Now I set it to right here, but you can choose what sort of background color you want. If you go over to the Editors tab over here, and I'm just gonna create a MIDI region just so you see what is happening here. So when you have the piano roll loaded up, by default, it is a dark color like this. But if you wanna work with a light color, just go to the same section, editors, bright background, and that will lighten that up for you. So this is just like a look thing, but um, sometimes you want it brighter or sometimes you want it darker, that's how you do it. All right, so next thing I wanna show you is probably something that should have been default in Logic, but it is not. So you may wanna turn this on for you seasoned vet Logic users as well. When you're working with MIDI, and I'm sure a lot of you experience this, if you start something halfway into a MIDI, it's not gonna play that MIDI, right? Because it didn't hit the top part. But we can go ahead and chase MIDI so that when you hit play, it's gonna just continue on and play this MIDI file region no, no matter where you start as if it's like an audio file. So if you go over to the top over here to file and go to project settings, go to MIDI, go over to the tab that says chase and make sure you select this on right over here, notes, right? So if I go ahead and just close that out now and now I can hit play no matter where I am in the MIDI region and Logic will play that out as if it's like an audio file. So something really cool, something you've probably been frustrated with, but now you can start anywhere in the MIDI region and just hear what's happening on that section. All right, so the next two tips has to do with organization within Logic. It depends how organized you wanna be. Uh, for myself, I just use the default, but I probably should organize myself. So maybe I should take my own tips. But if I go to Logic Pro right here in the top left-hand corner, and you're gonna wanna go to Preferences, and then you wanna go to Plugin Manager. So over here is a list of all your plugins. Now, when you're loading plugins in Logic, sometimes it could be like a lot of lists and menus that you got to go through. Uh, let me show you that. So let's say I want to load in a new plugin, but it's a third-party plugin, so I got to got to go to audio units and then find where it is in our dropdown. You can actually create folders that you can just quickly go to and access those plugins really quickly. Let's go back. Logic Pro Preferences Plugin Manager. You can actually create a folder, and you can just call it whatever you want. So let's call it like the essentials or something. Essentials, right? And then you can go through your list of plugins that you always use. Uh, there's a plugin by Baby Audio I like to use, Super VHS. And I'm just gonna drag that right into my essentials. So now when I go to essentials, it's over there. So now we can go ahead and hit done. Now if I wanna bring in that plugin really quickly, 
you're going to see a section over here, a folder that's called essentials. And I can just bring that in rather than going through all of the third party options. Now there's also the top level config that you can set up as well. So if we go to logic pro and let's go to preferences and go to plugin manager and select top level right over here. These are everything that's going to come up on the top levels. And let's bring in, uh, let's see here. Let's, it doesn't matter really what we bring. Let's bring the same plugin, baby audio, super VHS, bring it on the top level, just like that. Click done. So now if I go to my effects here, you're going to see on my top level, there it is right there, super VHS. And I can load that in. And it's just something that you can quickly access if you use all the time. All right. So the last organization tip that you probably want to make use of if you have a large sample library that houses your drums or loops all your samples and you want to access that in logic and you don't want to deal with finder you can definitely use logic's built-in browser so if you hit this browser tab right over here in the top right hand corner go to all files and select this tab over here bookmark this will be where wherever you save all your files now this won't show up until you actually save a folder so on your computer you can just find wherever your folder is so let's just go to desktop and say this folder is something I want to be bookmarked. So if I right click on that, go to bookmark. Now in your bookmarks, that folder is always going to be there. As long as you don't move it, it's going to be there. So that's just a quick way to access some of your samples, loops, whatever it may be. Really, really like pro tip that you should do off the bat is just make sure all your folders, all your samples that you work with are here so you can quickly access them in logic in this bookmarks folder and tab. All right, so those are the five tips I want to share that you must use if you're using Logic or if you're new to Logic. Just the one bonus one as well, there is an additional toolbar right over here underneath that is hidden by default. Now there's a lot of things that you can access right here in your session, so you can leave that open, but you can also take it further and customize everything that's in your toolbar as well. So if I right click on this gray area over here and select customize toolbar, you get all these options that you can add in should you want it. Again, you can go through each one and see what you want to use, but it just gives you different options that you can quickly access within your session. So that's it right there. Five uh, tips that you should use if you've been using Logic Pro. If you're new to Logic Pro, definitely check this out. But if you've been using Logic Pro for a while as well, you may want to use some of these features. Also, if you have any pro tips yourself or any starter tips yourself, let everyone know down in the comment section below. And that is for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember thumbs up, share this video, and of course, hit that subscribe button for more great videos like this one. We'll see you all soon. Later.